Now, the latest central bank figures show that more, more than 55,000 homeowners are more than three months behind in their payments. And there is little respite on the way for struggling homeowners after the government ruled out extensive debt forgiveness. So where to now for those in arrears? Carl Dieter of the Irish Mortgage Brokers and Angela Keegan of myhome.ie join us now to discuss it further. Very good morning to you both. Morning. Uh, now the, the thing is for me, and I, we were saying this just before we came on air, there's an awful lot of confusion about Angela. I think absolutely and I think last week uh, for me the government poured oil on a fire and just created more confusion because I think earlier in the week last week you had Michael Noonan come out and say the banks had been given additional capital uh, to help uh, struggling mortgage holders and then later on in, in and could have been the same day came out saying that absolutely there was no blanket solution for everybody in trouble and anyone thinking that free money was coming down the track forget it and for me it came across as if he was having somewhat of a rant because one nobody has ever asked for free money for anybody and I think it's really deflecting from what is a really serious issue in that people who need uh, debt forgiveness they're at the end of the line they're selling their home, they're trying to start again, they're left with a huge debt and left with nowhere to go. So I really think it was, it was a poor move by the government because for me there's more uncertainty than there ever was and those people who are actually struggling but managing to pay their mortgage could be either consciously or subconsciously the thought is planted as to well maybe there is something going to happen. So I, I really feel what needs to happen now is some decisive action needs to happen, needs to happen very quickly so people understand, people who are really in the situation where they're, they're, they're are, can't pay their mortgage, they're in arrears, they're looking to sell their home, they can't sell their home because uh, potentially they're in negative equity and the bank are going to hold them responsible. We need, first and foremost, I believe we need to work out a solution for that. But group. Carl, you think that solution is definitely de coming down the tracks very soon though? <coughs> I don't see how liquidations can end with a person paying money that they don't have. I would see that as a commercial reality. The issue I think with the, with the term debt forgiveness is that it's undefined. We don't actually have a textbook definition that we can refer to. So for some people they see it as helicopter money. And I think what uh, Minister Noonan was referring to was saying that he's not just going to rain down money on everyone who has debt. And that's correct. But what isn't correct is to take people who are at the end of their tether who have no financial means to take their property and to hold a judgment over them for the next 10 years. Because all that does is give them an incentive st to stay out of the workforce. The day you get back in, the bank is sitting on your shoulder. I'm sorry, but that's mistaken. That's bad economic policy. It's bad commercial policy. So what we need to do is give people a humane way to fail. Mm -hmm. That's really what debt forgiveness is about. Is that people in a situation like we've had economically, they do fail. And that's part of adult life, it's part of being in a business, it's part of working for companies. The people who've been laid off know this, the people who have no jobs know this. So just let them do what they need to do in a humane manner. That's mm -hmm. what this is all about. The money is there for that to happen and we shouldn't let the focus move away from that simply because anyone in government or otherwise says that they're not going to play ball with this. It will happen mm -hmm. with or without their participation. Uh, Angela, you were saying that in a statement Minister Noonan actually planted uh, thought into people's hands. I think, and, and maybe that's an exaggeration, but it would be a view that I, I, I would have that, like, to come out and say that there's not going to be free money for everybody and there would be queues at um, every TD's door of people looking for, um, you know, a, a way out of the situation that they're in. But by also the for very, people, yeah. By the very fact of articulating that view, it gives people who haven't had that view, um, you know, the, the thought that it could happen. <coughs> I don't believe for one second it should happen. I don't believe for one second there's a one-size-fits-all solution. And I, 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 I do think each, um, like, struggling mortgage holder, I think each situation needs to be looked at separately. And uh, the Central Bank on Friday, I think it was uh, Patrick Honaghan come out with um, four principles that he felt should be applied to any scheme, which I think were absolutely basic common sense and, and, and should be applied. The first one was um, each case should be looked at individually yeah. and absolutely it should be looked at, at the, uh, the ability of the mortgage holder to pay. Secondly, that no unnecessary um, legal steps should be put into the process. I think uh, 
Thirdly was that the uh, banks wouldn't pay for something that they shouldn't pay. And the fourth one skips my mind. Uh, uh, was it the avoidance of moral hazard? It or? was the avoidance yeah. of moral hazard, yeah. you're right. I, I, I think it's important as well. Yeah. Moral hazard is another one that we hear time and time yeah. again. I mean, if, if we were to put a cookie jar there and let kids come into the room and say, you can't take any cookies out of the jar, they naturally want to do it. And that's the economic equivalent of moral hazard, that if you offer money or solutions that people can take advantage of, they will. But what you need to do, and it's an economic term, is create uh, a separating equilibrium. In simple terms, with our cookie jar, we have it that it's electrified. That you know if you reach into that jar, you might get a cookie, but you're going to get very hurt in the process. And that's the whole thing, is you need to make a balance between making the solution for people painful enough that everyone doesn't jump in. Typically, this would include perhaps your house being taken, perhaps your credit history being destroyed for a very long time, perhaps uh, other solutions which create an attachment order to your income that you're paying off a part of this whether you want to or not. That is necessary to avoid people jumping in uh, en masse, but what you don't want to do is keep out the people who actually do need it. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's the same as locking sick people out of the hospital. You're not actually solving anything. You're not reducing costs in that respect. All you're doing is making sure the problem doesn't get addressed and we move it down the road. That's what we've done so far, which is the very reason why arrears are going up 10% quarter on quarter. You can project it out. It's just been a straight line rise for the last two and a half years. So what should people do now who are in this situation? Should they just go to the banks themselves with their case? I mean, is it, is it happening quietly at all? I mean, we've heard of some cases of it, but what, it, you know, what would you suggest people should do until something is actually uh, decided? I suppose, I suppose so, well, my fear would be that when you hear the banks are making these agreements with people in an unofficial capacity, what it means is that they do get a judgment against this person, but they say, we're not going to enforce it. So you sell your house at a 100,000 euro loss, the bank actually hold that judgment, but they tell the individual, we're not going to enforce that. Well, that's a completely informal contract. They could choose to enforce it in the future. Mm -hmm. So I think what we need to do is make a formal mechanism where the person goes into some form of arbitration, mm -hmm. says, this is the money that I have, these are my debts. Get a third party to work it out, and that's the plan. And if the lenders don't like it, get stuffed. Mm -hmm. You see, we are only talking about five or, well, Morgan Kelly told us that five or six billion will sort it out. And that's in the, in, in, uh, bearing in mind where we are and the amount of money that's been put in to help the banks isn't an awful lot. It isn't a huge amount of money and different economists are coming up with uh, different amounts. The, the five to six billion, uh, I think, is what, what uh, Morgan Kelly is saying. Um, and I think the, the, like we have to look at, we, we, we certainly have, the, the banks made a mistake and we've helped them out. Developers have made, made mistakes and we've helped them out. Um, homeowners have made mistakes. It's not to say that they don't uh, still own the responsibility for uh, the debt and for the decisions that they make. But those that are really struggling, I really think we have to help them out. And um, I'm not an economist. I don't know if it's, you know, six or 36 and we're, we're, we're seeing a wide range. But I do think um, the group which the government are talking about, which we don't know who's on, I think they need to be extremely transparent and come out fairly quickly saying this is the action which we are taking and this is how citizens can move forward with their lives. Okay, well, we're going to watch this with interest in the coming weeks and see how it develops. You think it is going to develop I and uh, look forward to talking to you again very soon. Thank Thanks, you so Angela. much. Thanks, Carl. Now, don't forget, if you miss any of the programme, you can catch it online, tv3.ie slash the morning show. Now, with a higher number of cases confirmed of Lyme disease in the west of Ireland than anywhere else in Europe, we'll be speaking to one woman who caught the disease after being bitten by a tick. And are Irish men bad dressers, or is it just that Irish women love to nitpick? We'll be looking at why so many women attempt to make over their man. The Midday Girls are up next, and we'll see you back here tomorrow at 11. Until then, have a great day. Bye-bye.